The Extraordinary Phenomenon Investigations Council presents Epic Voyages. Come join us as we enter and experience the great mysteries of the world with tonight's host, Laurel Blythe Tagg. Welcome back, everybody, to Epic Voyages Radio here at InceptionRadioNetwork.com. Please check us out at the website uh, and join our chat room where you can ask live questions. And um, I and the other hosts usually provide resources and links to our guests' websites and their books and even some pictures, images, photos of things we're talking about. So make sure you go to InceptionRadioNetwork.com and check out the chat room. Also, you can listen live tonight, uh, several different formats. They also have tips on how to listen through other devices like smartphones. And we are rebroadcast on Dark Matter Radio Network on Friday evenings at 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. We have hundreds of, uh, well, at least dozens, probably over 200, um, archived radio broadcast here at Epic Voyages Radio, so check those out as well. Look at our website, www.epicvoyagers.com. Uh, we're trying to um, upgrade it, and we've got links there to our Instagram and Twitter and Facebook and YouTube channels, which are pretty interesting for you to look at. And you can also find us on the Inception Radio Network's Roku Box channel. So tonight, we have quite a show in store for you. Our president and founder of Epic Voyagers, Ken Cherry, has just published his first book. And this is a really interesting topic because it's based on the factual investigation into the Stephenville, Texas UFO sightings that occurred um, in January, actually, I think they started in December, but in January of 2008, December 2007, and they actually continued on throughout 2008. It's a fascinating story. Ken was the Texas State MUFON director at the time. He is the main contact that received most of the calls from people citing, wanting to make a report. He was in charge of the investigation. And the entire book, and it's a substantial book, it's almost 400 pages, uh, is literally based on the absolute facts. It's a novel. It's based on the facts of what happened. And he ties in a lot of his firsthand experience with other investigations uh, in which he was involved and his knowledge about what's really going on at the national level in terms of UFO research and investigation. So before I welcome Ken to the show, and we talk about his new book, Mark Slade Investigates the Stephenville UFO, I want to tell you just a little bit more about him. He's a Texas native. He grew up in a South Dallas County suburb, got a BA in business from University of Texas at Arlington, magna cum laude. He was a stockbroker in Dallas and then moved to Wall Street. And then he became the regional VP for Lehman Brothers in Chicago. After that, when he retired in the mid-1980s, he came back to Texas, north of Fort Worth, to start his own securities business. He joined MUFON in 1991. I mentioned he was named the Texas State Director. And uh, one more thing I forgot to mention about his book. Uh, there is a page on the Epic Voyagers website where you can go to the bookstore and actually order a copy of the book. Uh, it's at a very good price. Ken's only asking $17. It's autographed by Ken and includes tax, shipping, handling, everything. And you'll get it 
probably within 24 to 48 hours. It's a standard uh, delivery and shipping. So we'll talk a little bit more about that later. Ken, are you still with me there? I'm still here. Thank you very much for that introduction. Uh, one, <laughs> one correction. Uh, Summa cum laude, please. <laughs> oh, oh, I am so sorry because what I had, uh, the written material I had said magma. So magma. Yeah, it's magma, not even magna. Those, <laughs> Ken, <laughs> we've got you blowing out the top of a volcano here. The, those so dark. summa cum laude, noted. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I, I didn't also mention this, but it kind of goes along with being summa cum laude. Ken has been a Mensa member for how many years, Ken? Uh, 43 now. <laughs> That's uh, that's on up there, getting on up there. Yeah, I'm holding out for my 50-year pen. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so um, you're up in uh, Keller, uh, northwest of or north of uh, the Dallas-Fort Worth metroplex. How's the weather treating you with all these tornadoes that we've been hearing about? It's just incredible. This is the, I'm a Texas native, and uh, I don't recall a wetter. Uh, spring than this and and all of my years here it's uh, just there's rain in the forecast every day for the for the next week and it's just been raining constantly for the last uh, couple of weeks so the reservoirs are are refilling we were experienced a drought like a lot of other parts of the country but they're even releasing water from some of the dams around here locally they're just they're become <laughs> overfull so um I can't complain. It's keeping the heat down, and uh, the farmers love it. And uh, maybe the drought conditions will be uh, solved. So you know, it's all good. <laughs> it's all good. Yeah, I tell you, um, being a native Texan myself, I of course watch the weather there. I remember uh, this is going to sound funny, but with some fondness, uh, riding out the hailstorms and the high winds and everything during the April, May, June um, storm season. But you guys have been baking. You you actually have, Texas only has one native, actual, natural lake, and that's uh, Caddo Mills, I think, along the border with Louisiana. Every other lake in Texas, and there are hundreds of them, are reservoirs. So that's how dry Texas is. And many of those reservoirs were down to bedrock in the last few years. So you guys need some rain. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, let's talk about you a little bit before we talk about the book. Uh, and remember, I, I didn't say the title right up at the front. It's Mark Slade Investigates the Stephenville UFOs. So we know you were the Texas State Director uh, at the same time that these, uh, this outbreak, let me call it an outbreak, started in January of 2008. But, but now you've written a novel. It's not like a, a documented, factual research book. And it's uh, seven years later. So why now? And why a novel? <laughs> well, um, I did begin it as a tell-all <laughs> uh, because uh, the the investigation was really an experience of a lifetime, and I I wanted to, the world to know um, what I had discovered in the course of my investigation. The actual. Um, investigation as far as MUFON was concerned was about a year's time. Uh, my own experience in, in the investigation of the matter though uh, took place over a number of years and uh, uh, so that was one reason for the delay. I just kept uncovering more and more facts uh, and <laughs> each one was more surprising than the previous and so this did take a number of years to gather all the information that I'm presenting in the book. And I approached a number of publishers that were very excited about uh, uh, the possibility of a, a book on this subject because, believe it or not, even though uh, the Stephenville UFO is considered one of the top UFO waves or sightings of all time, uh, there's been nothing else written about it. And, um, and so they were very happy to have the prospect of a, of a book on it. Uh, however, once they got into <laughs> my uh, uh, manuscript, manuscript that was uh, uh, filled with names, places, dates, times, and uh, you know, pointing fingers at folks, uh, I think that most they uh, 
you know, backed off. Uh, uh, even the largest publishers are not interested in being mired in, <laughs> in, in lawsuits and that sort of thing. So um, I decided to get this information out to the public. The best way to do it was in a novel form. And uh, I think that the discerning reader will be able to tell well, what is there for entertainment purposes and to carry the story along and what is in the based on fact. Mm -hmm. Well, I know that most people have heard about the lights at Marfa and, and the, uh, the, I guess it was a crash in Aurora, Texas, back at the turn of the uh, century between the late 1800s and 1900. And, of course, everyone knows about the Phoenix sightings. Is this the first time UFOs were ever sighted in the Stephenville area? Well, that's a very interesting story in and of itself. Um, I had uh, uh, several hundred people call me from all of the uh, tremendous number of stories that were carried about the Stephenville sighting. Uh, newspaper, magazines, radio interviews, TV interviews. So constantly my name was in uh, the public uh, light there for months. And you were on Larry King, weren't you? I was, I was on Larry King. I was Good on grief. Dateline, uh, NBC's Dateline, um, the Learning Channel, the History Channel, um, uh, Fox News affiliates. Uh, I mean, really, this was a major, major story that was covered by every form of media and uh, not only U.S. based, but uh, internationally based. And so I had folks uh, who were witnesses and whistleblowers calling me uh, almost from <laughs> uh, the, the first thing in the morning till very late at night, considering that some of them were in, in far distant time zones. And so they, uh, uh, um, I, I think I stopped counting at 150 calls from people. Wow. So. Wow. Uh, but it, it went on for months. And one of the things that was interesting to me was uh, how many older folks, uh, in, uh, couples come to mind in their early 80s, 80s, that would call and say, Mr. Cherry, we want to tell you that, you know, we've lived down here in the Erath County uh, outside of the city of Stephenville for all of our lives or 50, 60 years or somewhat. And they would tell me about a UFO encounter that they had 30, 40, 50 years ago. Wow. And that they were afraid to tell people in town, as they put it, because they would think they're crazy. And, you know, so back in those days, uh, you know, people really didn't take anyone seriously who made these kind of claims. But I, I began to get more and more of those type of uh, calls from folks all over the area out there. And when I say all over the area, the, the sightings took place really over about a four-county area. But when you consider, you know, there's about 240 counties in Texas, that's a pretty that's a pretty tight knit group. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm going to post in the chat room a map of the state of Texas with that area highlighted. It's pretty much what you'd call the heart of Texas, right? It is the heart of Texas. Um, I mean, the folks are hardworking. Um, one of the things I was surprised by is that uh, I guess the typical image of people that live out in the country is that they're not as well educated, they're not very sophisticated and so forth. And to, much to my surprise, most of the folks were pretty well educated. I mean, many of them had college degrees, they were professionals and this sort of thing. They had grown up in Texas, in small town, uh, rural environment. Uh, they had gone off to college. They'd had careers. And, and when they retired, they came back and settled near home. Or uh, one thing, uh, the primary industry of Erath County is, is dairy farming. But uh, most dairy farms are not big enough to support uh, uh, you know, a family. Uh, they're not. They're they're very. They're 
truly small businesses, but they're very labor intensive. Mm -hmm. And so majority of dairy farmers have what they call day jobs. Mm -hmm. And so many of them worked in professions uh, at the, in nearby Waco or uh, there's a, a defense plant that they would say up the road, you know, people there didn't think anything about traveling 60, 80 miles to work one way or the other. Oh, if so, you're a Texan, you're used to driving like that every day anyway. <laughs> it, it, yeah, I remember the first time somebody said, let's go to, you know, go to dinner. And we said, where are we going? Oh, it's just down the road. <laughs> 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 about 80 miles away, you know. Yeah, we uh, don't think in distance. We think in just getting there. That's all. Uh, well, and back in those days, you could travel 80 miles an hour and not mm -hmm. see anybody on the road for a lot, you know, maybe the whole trip. But and, and don't forget the Dr. Pepper plant in Dublin. The Dr. Pepper plant, home of the original Dr. Pepper. Uh, so there are a lot of uh, very educated and uh, uh, experienced folks there that we ran into. And so um, uh, they were very credible. Uh, it is a college town as well. It has Carleton mm -hmm. State University there. And I'll tell you, we had almost no uh, college students that, uh, that come to mind that – uh, you know, came to the forefront and saying, you know, I saw this UFO or anything. So it was mostly, as I like to call them, us gray-haired folks that were witnesses. I mean, people who are not easily, um, you know, frightened or, you know, they, they were more curious than anything. Not was, hysterical. Not, not hysterical. Well, I imagine those college kids were involved in some extracurricular activities and couldn't be bothered. <laughs> well... One of the um, one of the witnesses that uh, called me, and I won't give his name, but he was a um, a country western star, and uh, he was oh, well up in age. I mean, his his uh, the peak of his career was probably in the seventies. Wow! <laughs> uh, but he was coming back from um, uh, a gig someplace, and he said his. Uh, his band was in a uh, a bus, and he and his manager were in a uh, in a car. And this uh, area out there that's just north of Stephenville in Arath County, they were flying down the highway late at night, uh, I-20, I believe it is, and uh, there's an area there called Ranger Hill that uh, <laughs> is not much of a hill by most <laughs> standards, but... <laughs> And that area, you know, that's generally flat, this is a big deal. So anyway, this ball UFO came down right in front of the bus, you know, and um, uh, kind of hovered there in front of them as they're traveling along. It was, in, you know, uh, synchronized with the speed of the bus. And as he slowed down, the thing uh, flipped uh, over the bus, went back to the window of the car that this uh, country star was in and um, they all came to a halt i mean it was unsafe driving so then the ufo went down the side of this hill out of sight and for some reason he decides to get out with his 38 and go down the hill you know, he's <laughs> gonna investigate this thing and um and he said then it just shot straight up in the air and then headed off uh, east toward uh, the toward the fort worth area First small town they uh, stopped in to get some gas. Uh, there was a, a state trooper there you know, talking to some people, and he said, I, I thought for just a few minutes about going over there and giving him a report, you know, what we had seen. And then he said, nah, all he's going <laughs> to he's going to think, you know, a bunch of musicians, you know, they've been smoking something. And he said, right. we didn't. Didn't really want to invite that kind of scrutiny, so we just let it go. And this but, wasn't recent. This was in the seventies that he's telling you the story about it. No, his. The, I'm saying the height of his career was uh, mm -hmm. probably in the. I'm exact. I don't know exactly when it was. He he had some signature song that I can't recall offhand. That was, you know, if you heard it, it was a catchy little tune. And then of course he had made his entire career out on that you know as but, one I, of but I mean the event that he's talking about on Ranger Hill when did that happen it wasn't like in 2008 uh, no no it had been just a few years before uh, so okay. uh, but this yes this is one of the um, many many 
uh, reports of, of sightings in that area uh, that happened over a long period of time. On a, and so, uh, actually, I guess the oldest report that we found, and I, and I say we uh, got to know Mark Murphy, who is the city councilman for uh, Dublin, uh, just, uh, you know, the next little town down the road from Stephenville. And as you say, the, the home of the, uh, uh, Dr. Pepper, uh, that's their main claim to fame. I think the town is maybe three, 4,000 people, very small. Anyway, um, Mark, uh, was, uh, doing some research in this small library they had, which is sort of a combination of the, uh, the little newspaper and found a, I believe it was a microfish of a calendar of all things that was printed back in early, early 1900s, you know, right at the turn of the century. And it had on it an account from the little Dublin paper. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess they used to pr print all sorts of things on the old calendars, you know, like mm -hmm. weather forecasts, uh, you know, this is the anniversary of, you know, mm -hmm. all sorts of things. And he found on there a reprint of an article about uh, a sighting that had occurred in Dublin in, in 1896, I believe it was, uh, said that a, a number of townspeople uh, witnessed this uh, flying, it, it, what appeared to be a burning bale of hay. Now, when you think about it, uh, describing a UFO incident in 1896 terms, when you've never even seen anything, you know, fly, but, mm -hmm. but a bird, uh, and you're trying to describe this uh, glowing UFO, uh, that would be what you might think of as an image. And mm -hmm. at any rate, it crashed into uh, some structure there, wooden structure, and in all of this debris, they found uh, some strange parchment with hieroglyphics on it. Mm. And so that was the way they, the only way they could relate to this strange writing that was on there. And of course, the story doesn't say what happened to any of the debris or the parchment or any of that sort of thing, unfortunately. Um, but the point being is that we found a history of, of sightings in and around that area that went back at least 120 years, 115 wow. years or so. So, um, you know, it appears to be uh, an active area. And that was one of the burning questions in my mind that, that really came from a witness because a, a lot of people think in terms of the Stephenville UFO as being an event that took place on, you know, January the 8th or of uh, 2008 and actually it was a series uh, of sightings that took place over a number of months frankly so I think that what? is news to a lot of people I, I do agree with you I think people think it was a one-time deal oh, right and one of the witnesses who told me about their own experience then turned to me and asked a question that no one else had asked why do you think this thing keeps coming back? Mm -hmm. And the more I looked into it, uh, the more that did become one of the central questions. And, um, of course, as I developed um, inside information from whistleblowers who came forward, I, I began to realize the significance of that. And I also had people had these uh, insiders point me in the direction of the answer to that question. Well, yeah. Ken, Ken, let me jump in and remind everybody, because we've been going here for a good 25 minutes, and if someone has just stumbled in, they have no idea how important <laughs> this conversation is. <laughs> We're talking with Chen Carey. Uh, Chen Carey, I am so sorry. Ken Cherry, <laughs> who is the president and founder of Epic Voyagers, and he has a brand new book that has just been published. Mark Slade investigates the, UF, the Stephenville UFO, and... I was just going to ask you, uh, related to what you were saying, this part of Texas is in very, very close proximity to the uh, 
the Bush Ranch, the Texas White House, and also the superconducting super collider down in Waxahachie. And there's a number of military bases and installations surrounding it within probably a, at least a 100-mile radius. So do you think that that geography has anything to do with, with the uh, sightings? <laughs> well, I, I, I'm going to be a bit facetious here and answer you by saying, yes, it does, and no, it doesn't. <laughs> Uh, you're correct in that the Bush Ranch is right there, um, and we had reporters, you know, it would be investigators uh, from all over uh, saying uh, you know, we were blind. The answer for why the UFO had come there was right in front of our eyes. You know, they were there because of the Bush Ranch and so forth. And of course, the the Bushes were not even at home. Uh, it, it, uh, at the time of the, uh, I would say, the day when there was a mass sighting by, you know, the people in and around there. So that, I, I, I hardly think that these uh, intelligent beings, whoever they were, uh, wouldn't have known that. Uh, also, you're right, this uh, probably, I think, the largest military base in the country and one of the largest concentrations of military in the country in Texas. So, um, you know, I think all of those things are sort of significant. But as I developed information, uh, I realized that um, these sightings have occurred in and around there for so long. You know, they preceded the the, uh, uh, the ranch or Bush's uh, uh, home or the or the, the military bases or uh, a, anything else. And so I don't want to give away uh, too much, uh, but I will say this. If you see bees in a field year after year after year, that tells you something. Oh, now that is, that is an amazing comment. I want you to repeat that. Everybody listen to this. I've never heard a comment like this before. If well, Say it again. These UFOs uh, didn't just uh, come back time and time again in 2008. We found a pattern and a history of visitation of uh, UFOs there going back at least to the uh, Dublin sighting in uh, 1896. When I say Dublin, I'm talking Dublin, Texas, of course. Right, right. Uh, that's right in that area. And so... The analogy I would use to, to make our listeners think a moment is if you see a group of bees in a field year after year after year, if they keep coming back, mm -hmm. that tells you something. Yeah, there's a reason for it. Yeah, and so uh, that's one of the disclosures that I make in the book, and so I think they'll be shocked to find out, and uh <laughs> Uh, you, just anyway. made, you just reminded me of something. Is it possible, uh, or do you know if there's any resources where someone could go back and see if the local indigenous tribes, the, the Comanche and Cherokee and all, all the rest of them there in central Texas, and there were bunches of them, if they ever had sightings and made records of it? Do you know that? I don't. Um, that might be interesting uh, for someone to pursue. Sure. Obviously, if you're going to find signs of it now, it's going to have to be in, uh, you know, in a museum someplace in terms of their pottery or, you know, things of that nature. Mm -hmm. Obviously, they didn't keep a written record the way we do in books and things. It was more yeah. of an oral tradition. So, or paintings um, or pictographs or something like that. Yeah, I. Um, <laughs> well, you got me thinking down the road, but I had <laughs> I, I've got two. Two uh, cases, and I want to uh, tell uh, the folks right now, the reason I named this uh, Mark Slade Investigates and then, you know, the Stephenville UFO is because if if the public likes it, if it, if it uh, uh, meets with uh, at least enough, <laughs> a good enough reception to justify, I will uh, uh, continue it as a series. Uh, based on actual cases, and 
uh, there are at least two that I'm contemplating that do involve Native Americans, and uh, they're both fascinating cases. And one of them is here in Texas uh, again. Uh, I guess you know it, it was something that I was very much involved in, and so it has all the elements, all the all the cool elements, you know, Indian oh, lore. That's exciting. I hope you do follow through on that and write that up. I'd love to see that. I have read the book. I had an advanced copy. I want to <laughs> mention that for listeners. And it is, it is not just entertaining. It is fascinating in the same way that I would describe the X-Files. I was a real X-Files junkie uh, back when they were on TV in the 90s. And I just couldn't wait for the next, the next episode. And it's, it's a, like a page-turner in that way. But I learned so much about things that are not fictional at all from reading the book and I'd, I'd like to mention that you have 17 chapters in the back of the book that are appendices uh, supporting actual information and details that pertain to things that occur in the book right I wanted to uh, uh, provide something for the hardcore ufologist and I think even uh, the most experienced of uh, ufologists and if you've been involved in it for a number of years we'll find something some new information there and also will um, provide uh, a basis for some of the uh, events that occur in the novel uh, that may help to convince some of the skeptics <laughs> uh, of the plausibility so you know I think there's something there for some uh, for everyone uh, if you or just love a good a conspiracy story, a good detective novel, or if you're a hardcore ufologist. Uh, uh, the main thing is, I would say, um, uh, the resistance will be, oh, I've seen this story about the Stephenville UFO so many times, I already know about it. And uh, what I want to say is that um, the story was not done justice by uh, you know, Larry King, bless his soul, he is uh, one of the few uh, high-profile uh, newsmen who has tried to uh, really uh, dig into the UFO mystery. Uh, but he and uh, the UFO hunters, um, uh, chasing UFOs, uh, any number of other uh, channels and programs that have uh, gone into the Stephenville UFO have approached it solely from the same uh, direction. You know, they, they trot out Steve Allen, which I found to be a very credible and honorable man. I liked him personally right off now, the bat. Now, Steve Allen, and so that you're mentioning, is a witness and not Steve Allen of radio and comedy. <laughs> Steve Allen um, was the first witness uh, to be brave enough to come forward. He went into the uh, newspaper there, the Stephenville uh, Empire Tribune uh, and uh, in Stephenville and uh, sought out a uh, truly cub reporter to tell his story about the sighting that he and uh, a couple of his companions had and uh, it was a remarkable story and she uh, convinced her editor to to uh, publish it and um, actually uh, that would probably have died right there had it not been for the fact that, well, I'll take some credit here, but uh, uh, I received a phone call um, on the 10th when the story was published uh, uh, from uh, Angela K. Brown, who was, um, uh, her post was with the Fort Worth Star-Telegram, but she was really an AP reporter. Uh, Angela knew that I was the contact in Texas for MUFON, called me up and said, hey, have you seen this story in the Stephenville paper? Do you pay, place any credibility on it? Uh, what are your thoughts and so forth? And I, you know, I filled her in that we had already experienced a, a significant increase in uh, reported sightings in and around Stephenville uh, beginning back in December of 07. And that, yes, this sounded like the other reports we'd had and you know the people weren't next door neighbors they were pretty uh, spread out by location so that when you have that many reports that uh, 
or that similar, then it becomes it's significant. And so we were intending to go down there and interview a bunch of witnesses and so forth. Well, it was Angela's uh, report on the AP wires uh, that took the story national and then international and made it a phenomenon, I mean, a, a real flap. So, um, you know, all due respect to uh, the, the Stephenville paper, uh, they printed the story, but it was really the AP reporter that made it uh, a, a huge uh, sensation. That's when it caught fire. That's when it caught fire. And um, I was just amazed at it. Uh, the well, uh, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, uh, that, that, <laughs> I was just I was just going to say something about the book itself, and I'm I'm not going to give away anything, um, but I want to say a couple of things. First of all, one of the things that I found really interesting are some of the uh, tributes and comments you've got on the very front cover. Uh, Whitley Strieber himself, part of one of the comments that's inside the book, he says, "Chillingly possible," mm. and of course, the entire back cover. Um, Jim Mars, our esteemed colleague in Epic Voyagers, um, has written a tribute. You've got one from um, uh, Dr. Rita Louise has written a comment, right? Who were the others that, that have uh, added comments? Skip uh, Hollinsworth is the executive, um, uh, uh, I'm sorry, publisher uh, uh, of the uh, of Texas Monthly Magazine, which is... Uh, probably the premier mag not probably it is the premier magazine here in texas and uh actually it is so highly regarded that uh, uh texas monthly and particularly skip uh, hollandsworth's uh, stories are monitored by these uh, interns at the major uh, movie studios in hollywood uh skip uh, has uh, any number of his stories that are optioned out as, as movies. As a matter of fact, when he wrote the story uh, about me in Texas Monthly, uh, <laughs> that was back when my phone was ringing off the hook anyway, and I, I had newly installed a caller ID. And so <laughs> I... One day the phone rang, which was, you know, I just barely put it down. I looked on the caller ID, and it said Paramount. And I thought, well, you know, I don't know who that is. It's some insurance company or, <laughs> or, or something, you know, some marketer. But I picked it up anyway. And uh, uh, this uh, person identified themselves as the uh, assistant uh, to uh, producer Scott Apersano. And I... You know, I didn't know who Mr. Aversano was, but she said he's on his way back from uh, a, a movie opening in London, and he is read this story about you in the Texas Monthly. He's on the airplane now. <laughs> wow. And he contacted me and said for me to get in touch with you as, as soon as possible because he wants to discuss, you know, your life rights to make a major motion picture about this uh <laughs> incident and uh i didn't really i couldn't fathom all this uh i couldn't quite take it all in one of the things she said was though you can't talk to mr aversano without an agent <laughs> oh my and so i mean the, the whole experience for about a year uh, uh while this was getting so much publicity was just really quite overwhelming and uh, uh, I did uh, manage after searching around uh, to get an agent with William Morris and uh, uh, they're probably the top agency in Hollywood uh, anyway uh, Mr. Aversano is uh, was in a uh, production uh, partnership with Scott Rudin and they produced the movie No Country for Old Men, which was an Academy Award winner. Excellent movie. Yeah, and they had done a number of other uh, projects together. But um, at one point, you know, I talked to Aversano several times over a period of a year. And I, I had told him who I wanted to, to uh, 
play me and the first I asked him if I could uh, play my character <laughs> kind of laughing <laughs> 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 He went away and just said, no. <laughs> and uh, so I, I suggested uh, someone, and he says, no, we're going to get a real actor, Tommy Lee Jones. Wow. And, and he said, we're going to make it sort of like a No Country for Old Men Meets Men in Black. <laughs> oh, that sounds like a good movie. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I guess they – he, Tommy Lee, was uh, in uh, No Country for Old Men, of course, and so I guess uh, Rudin and Arsano had him under contract. But uh, um, you know, I thought that was kind of interesting. Another uh, native Texan guy playing me—that was kind of cool. So that's well, very appropriate. Very yeah, appropriate. Yeah. And and while you mentioned Men in Black, there are Men in Black in the book. Uh, right. And like I said, I don't want to give anything away because people really need to get this book and read it because it's going to be made into a movie, and I don't have any doubt of that. But <laughs> let me let me just read something. I, I do want I do want to finish a point that was oh, I'm sorry uh, that I started rambling on some time ago was that the fact that. Every st- every time anybody has presented the story, they've brought out uh, the same cast of characters, and I mean that you know uh, respectfully. Uh, uh, you know, Steve Allen, uh, off uh, the constable Leroy Gayton, and uh, and the reporter uh, Angelia, and uh, her name, her last name escapes me at the moment. But anyway. Um, so they tell their story about seeing this enormous craft, and so people think that's it. It's, it's it's that's it. That's the whole story, and in fact, that isn't even the tip of the iceberg. And so, what I focus on, and deliberately don't begin with uh, Steve Allen's sighting or Officer Gaten, who saw it later in the evening, or other. Uh, I I began with one of the other. Um, uh, reports that we had and because there were many 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 incredible people uh, who came forward and uh, that's that was uh, uh, important I thought to to bring out but at any rate uh, the the story that I tell I guarantee you you're probably only familiar with two chapters in there when I kind of give a brief history of uh, Stephenville and Erath County, and the other is I do uh, kind of uh, have a chapter, a short chapter devoted to the actual event that was reported widely with Steve Allen. So, but the rest of the other 340 pages or so are are devoted to brand new information. Mm-hmm. And so, um, yeah, you were asking me about. Men in Black. So well, no, I I wanted to point out that there are Men in Black in the book. Uh, tangentially, it's not like they're a, a focal point either. But I want to read a statement from the back cover, and I'm not giving anything away. I'm just <laughs> reading something on the back cover. It says, "This is a fascinating and frightening tale of sinister plots and shadow government agencies vying for control of the country." So if that doesn't give you just a little bit of a desire to know more about the book, it's not just about UFOs. It just is not about UFOs and that's it. This is not like anything you've ever seen on the cable channel shows about UFOs. I I will give you at least that much of a testimonial. Um, Kenneth, I think we've got about, oh... 10 minutes left before we have to break. I want to sneak in a couple of quick questions. Have you ever had your own UFO encounter? Uh, I have, and I sneaked that into the book. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, So, um, uh, and the reason I want to make the point that, yes, I've had my own encounter is because there was a time during the investigation that it uh, I was accused of being a skeptic and there to cover up, you know, what had truly happened. And I'm not a skeptic. I, I just need, I need proof. I need, you know, I'm not uh, uh, a person that's, okay, I, I want to go beyond just what I'm told. And uh, so uh, 
at, at any rate, uh, I think it probably came as a surprise to people, or would come to a surprise to so some people. Well, some people will read this book thinking that, um, oh, first of all, they'll be looking for their own character there, <laughs> and uh, uh, and the other is that they'll think that I'm trying to cover up or, or mislead people about what happened. But at any rate, no. Um, when I was a young uh, youngster, about eight years old, we lived uh, on a ranch in what is now, uh, what was then and now, um, a Dunkerville, uh, just uh, uh, south of, of uh, Dallas. Uh, but it was scrub land, ranch land back in those days, and now it's a, uh, you know, middle class, upper middle class uh, uh, area. So. Um, <laughs> might be interesting for people to know that uh, anyway uh, back in those days uh, kids were pretty independent especially uh, kids that lived on farms and ranches and so, and so forth so you know we would be out on our own even at a young age for most of the day you know without our uh, <laughs> you know probably got our drink of water out of the water hose rather than running back into the house even i mean we just spent a lot of time outdoors but at any rate uh, uh it was a pretty um, isolated area mostly scrub trees but one of our uh, open fields i walked into and i looked up and uh, it there was this strange object going across uh, just uh, you know, slowly across the skyline there it wasn't didn't appear to be that far away I can't really judge at this point, but uh, um, it, I, I can only describe it as a silvery object, you know, it, it, in terms of my thoughts then as an eight-year-old. I, I did have a lot of experience with seeing craft flying, so I couldn't, you know, I didn't come to any opinion about what it was, except next thing I know that there's this uh, apparently – one of our early jets, uh, this would have been in the early 50s, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, that just was diving out of the sky toward this thing. Mm. And the next thing I saw was either the sun glinting off of it, I don't know what. It appeared almost like something uh, from the silvery craft to the uh, jet. And um, uh, the pilot. Uh, ejected suddenly from the aircraft. Wow. And um, uh, the, the, the plane crashed, of course, and everything, and the, the silvery object, which would have been uh, a UFO in today's terms or a flying saucer back then, if I'd have known what to call it, just took off. And, um, you know, it was pretty sparsely populated back in those days in, in that area. And, mm. you know, but the few neighbors that we... Uh, ran into or you know i heard overheard conversations it was another thing about those days you know children were to be seen and not heard so this is not conversations that i took part in but overheard conversation people it was a big buzz for some time about people going out to rescue this pilot you know from the trees his parachute had hung Jeez, up in the trees i can imagine and no apparently no one or no one that i heard about or knew of witnessed this encounter between this jet and this UFO. Huh. So we were, at one point, there was a, a directive all the way from, you know, the president's office to our military that if these things wouldn't land, that they were to shoot them down. I mean, there, uh, uh, there was a, our, uh, there have been articles written in magazine, I, I recall seeing this, shoot them down well uh at one point uh i recall uh reading that uh that we were losing a plane a day somewhere in the world from this uh uh attempts to to uh, sh shoot down or force these ufos to land and um you know it was only <clears throat> after uh many, many losses on our side <laughs> to no avail that the order was rescinded. So apparently we were still in that shoot them down 
you know mental framework back then. Right. So anyway, I hate to belabor it, but it was such a such an incredible event uh, that yeah. you know it's like everybody knows where they were when John F. Kennedy was assassinated, and this is something that I would never forget either. Mm -hmm. And so that's, that's a remarkable story. And you, as a little kid, of course, it would stick with you forever. It it was like I was watching a movie screen up there. Mm -hmm. I mean, I hate to say that because I may cast doubt on the validity of what I'm saying, but I'm just trying to draw this image. It was just there. It was like it was f for me. It was mm -hmm. this tremendous event that should have been witnessed by hundreds, if not thousands, of people, and yet it was me and my dog. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're just lucky you weren't abducted. I'll just you're, say that much. Right. <laughs> um, before we have to break, I want to ask you a quick question then. Do you think, I mean, we, we've been talking about you saw something and we know all the stories about Roswell, we know about Blue Book. Do you think that there is some kind of censorship or a disinformation campaign going on um, about UFOs and ETs, and do you have examples in the book that actually relate from the facts in the Stephenville case? <laughs> uh, the answer to that is twofold, yes and no. <laughs> oh, you're so complicated. Uh, yes, I believe there is censorship, and no, I can't think of a specific incident where I go into that. I believe, I, I believe that I you know, sort of weave that in a priori of uh, the uh, uh, conspiracy, but, you know, I don't, I don't really focus on that. But I will say this, uh, one of my good friends who's very well known uh, had connections with uh, the uh, CBS, well, just go ahead and get, disclose that, but uh, one of the uh, newscasters of the glory days of CBS and he were good friends and um, they said uh, you know this there was uh, only two stories types of stories that had to go to their censors for the news and uh, this uh, this newscaster was a Texan by the way At any rate <laughs> uh, uh, there were uh, uh, terrorist attacks and UFO stories. And he said the terrorist attacks, you know, we could understand because, you know, you don't want to accidentally give any kind of usable information to terrorists. This was back in the day where, you know, they don't want to tell them how effective the bomb was, how many people it killed, or, you know, they, they wanted to give the authorities the edge in, in terms of, okay, so that's fine. He said, but he never once saw a UFO story approved for, huh. and so yeah, there is there has been some change, uh, I believe, with the uh, the news. Uh, you see it on a local level more so, uh, but even that uh, represents a relaxation of the of the uh, the censorship standards. Um, I think more of what occurs now. And it's more in the print and the blogs and the internet and uh, all of this sort of thing. Is that there's an intentional uh, misdirection, um, uh, uh, more so more so than uh, than trying to cover up. It's pretty difficult to cover up lots of things nowadays because there's so many people with camera phones and whatnot. But what what they do is uh, they'll they'll discredit it you know, uh, one way or the other. It's amazing. The pictures are always almost uh, too blurry or they're too good to be real, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, but uh, I saw that with the Stephenville uh, event that the, the, some of the reporters became either witting or unwitting <laughs> uh, to, uh, the tools, uh, I use that advisedly, of um, the folks who wanted to uh, you know, manipulate the news, and uh, in, in part to kind of discredit it, dismiss it, uh, and so uh, I, that answer. Uh, hopefully, that answers that part. But uh, I don't really dwell on that in in the book. Um, I know some people realize I had sort of a bit of a contentious 
relationship with some of the reporters and to my way of thinking they were part of the disinformation uh, that was being put out there and I don't I don't necessarily think that they completely realized it but anyway there was a manipulation of the story well I, I can see how something like this could could completely make a person's uh, maybe not their whole career, but uh, put them in a prominent spot to garner a lot of attention to themselves because it's such a big story. Um, we've got just a little over a minute until we have to take a break, Ken. So let me, um, I'm going to ask you when we come back to give us an overview of the real investigation. And uh, then we're going to jump into talking about the book itself. The book being Mark Slade Investigates. The Stephenville UFO, a brand new book out by Ken Cherry, the president and uh, founder of Epic Voyagers. And I invite you to go to the website, epicvoyagers.com. Uh, there is a promo right on the front page uh, about the book. You'll see the cover of the book. And we've got a link there to the Epic Voyagers bookstore where you can actually buy an autographed copy. Uh, and have it shipped to you, all expenses, taxes, everything covered for $17. And um, take a look at it. If you feel like it's pretty interesting, uh, you can click on that button and go through PayPal. We're going to be back in just a, just about two or three minutes uh, with Ken uh, asking a few more questions. And we'll be taking questions from the chat room and Skype. So join us back. Dial-in number for You're questions tonight with Ken is 888-919-2355. Of course, you can go to the chat room at Inception Radio Network and type in a question or go to Inception Radio Network on Skype and send us one that way. So, Ken, did I hope you got a Hello, cup Inception of coffee Radio or Network something listeners. for the next hour. Would you like your favorite show to be played I'm live here. on air? I'm well, <laughs> now the choice is in your hands with IRN's <laughs> okay. live request. I'm well, having fun. An easy way to request your well, favorite um, show with a simple I, I'd click. Like IRN's you, live we're, request we're not, portal we're not gives you talk exclusive a whole lot access to all the shows. How events easy is it? Simply Bill, type a show name or a guest name, click request, and even write a dedication message. Click request and even write a dedication message. That's it. That took Try place it now. Simply visit Inception Radio Network tab on the show Many months later, on towards the end of the year, can, can you tell me first of all when you got to Stephenville in Dublin? What, what, how would you describe Don't the actual computer? vibe? Is your internet connection down? Don't worry. Use your trusty cell phone or landline and call into our listen line you at four zero one two eight three six seven zero zero to listen well, to the Inception Radio earlier, Network twenty four seven. Uh, Again, that call in number is four zero one two eight three six seven zero zero. For the Inception like that, Radio were, Network, I am MJ. Um, I would say uh, well, excited back, to uh, in a muted sort of way. I'm very curious. Radio Network. Uh, uh, they if you missed the first hour, um, be sure to check back really just here at Inception Radio Network for the archive because we're talking uh, I think with they were Ken very Cherry, excited about the, the founder of and president for Epic Voyagers. You know, and we're talking a, a, a to him UFO about his brand new book that I just saw today else. is available on and, Amazon uh, other than our um, own called planet. Mark Slade and, Investigates uh, the Stephenville the, UFOs. Uh, um, now, Ken also has autographed copies available at our website, not coming clean on the UFO phenomenon is that people can't handle it. But I'll tell you what, when we got to talking to these folks, also I found a very level-headed outlook about it all with I will warn you, it is a long book. People today, I think, could accept the idea and actually take it for granted that in the universe that there has to be other intelligent life. And of course, that's what many, most people wanted to know, is this from someplace else. And of course, the flip side of that is it one of our 
stars useful or was it resources a in the book. It's not what, at all but, uh, um, no, um, fiction. It's not a novel. Really, it's actually relating what you talk about in the novel carnival to what's really going on out there based on your years of experience almost like uh, as the uh, Texas state director for MUFON to, all those many years. Uh, to, uh, so, Ken, welcome back. You know, uh, let me give one more thing out. The number, type of thing. dial there in were, number for questions were, uh, tonight with Ken is 888 919 Of course, you can go to the chat like room aliens, at Inception Radio you know, Network and type in a question on, or go to Inception you know Radio Network on Skype and send us one that way. So, Ken, I hope you got a cup of coffee or something for the next hour. Take advantage of the situation. I'm here. They're probably <laughs> trying to get caught on uh, film, awake. and they can see themselves <laughs> okay. at ten o'clock in the night. I'm having fun. Well, exactly. Um, and I, I'd um, like for you. We're we're not you know, we're not going to talk a whole lot longer would be about the actual <laughs> events <laughs> yep, and yep. Stephen Bill. But there's a few things I really uh, but, do want um, you to mention uh, the people uh, who about the came there as witnesses that took uh, place. Uh, from were, uh, January you know, 2008, uh, as, as I understand fact, it, at least a, many uh, months a, later a, on towards the end of the year. Can, can you tell me, first of all, what they saw when you got to Stephenville in Dublin, what they, what, what, how would you, you know, describe the their emotions vibe? were like? Or the psychological um, a number of them had their, among uh, the locals their there them, when their you dog, and your team arrived. And uh, you know, well, they would tell as I explained what earlier, the these were was mostly on, uh, on great hat folks, and, so you, you, you know, see, they were just uh, like people doing facts, handstands you know, or anything so like these that. Were they not, were a bunch of people um, who were hysterical say, or anything like that at the uh, beginning, so you know, excited, uh, in a muted it was, sort of uh, way. I was very you know, curious, I, I, I was uh, they really all, quite surprised. Um, so, yeah. really, just Pleasant. wanted so, to know what they so had seen. So, obviously, no outright uh, I think they were very excited no, about the prospect um, of it actually it, being. As I said, if there was any hysteria, yeah, it was among a, the a uh, UFO that uh, the media could have been who were from there someplace and these, else. Uh, people and, who came uh, up, other I think, than for the purpose planet. of really turning it and, into some sort uh, of carnival. One of who, the. Uh, and I, I think, you know, uh, what's funny is, of course, course it was mostly for, younger people who you know, came not coming clear on the UFO phenomenon so is that people can't handle it. But I'll tell you what, when you know, the kind we of got uh, carnival atmosphere, to talking using to that, these but folks, I can't think of anything else. I people found are just very like level-headed uh, things on their uh, head and face, and, you know, all, whatnot. Um, but uh, with um, the. Uh, <laughs> The uh, media, the uh, people today, uh, I think, were, could accept uh, the idea. They were and pretty amazing take too. It for granted uh, that in the universe, I had uh, that there has to uh, be one other intelligent uh, life. Crew of course, that's what that many came from New York wanted. They, they, they know, said that they were in the middle of from some place filming else. a documentary. And of course, the flip side of that uh, is it one of ours, or, or was it what a natural uh, phenomenon? Was, or what? And they were but, told uh, to get on a no, plane um, and get to Dublin. Really. <laughs> The there next was, day, I mean, just stop shooting. A bit of a carnival and, and atmosphere. Uh, by there was one correspondent and it was there almost for like a uh, Japanese network. Someone was trying uh, to. There was to, a, uh, a reporter there from the uh, large know, San Francisco newspaper. Kind of a carnival. I mean, these folks were, came from all were, over the country. Carlos, so that came up from Austin and just from Dallas, Dallas the newsroom, and just were hats, everywhere. Oh it my was goodness! Seen. Dressed up and like aliens. Uh, we did, you know, they had uh, their public dogs the with costumes on. Uh, uh, but you know what? Those were all outside to interview witnesses because uh, there were simply uh, too many you know, of them who were just, I think, uh, trying to, to take advantage of the situation. Well, they were but, probably trying so, to get caught on you know, uh, film, and they could see themselves place, at 10 o'clock course, in the news. Wow. That was <laughs> exactly like a man. And, um, <laughs> People from you know, all I guess over. The term uh, one of these would be photo bombing officials. <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> the plant manager who uh, made but, the arrangements um, for us there at the Rotary uh, the people Club told me that there came were 500 there as people in that room. room. Uh, wow. They were, and you know, they would sit there and just so matter of fact, that give us, uh, we could uh, see people coming to the front door and they would turn away because you know, there just wasn't any place for them to stay in. And the guy just was kind of shaking his head. He said, I don't think we ever emotions were like people in this room. As good as Dr. Pepper is. They pass with them, their dogs primarily. I got to tell you, this little town, you know, they would tell what the effect was on the pet. And uh, brick, you know, uh, roads just like that were built here you know, late in the you know? depression. So these were not era, a bunch you know, of people the who were hysterical or anything like that. In the I mean, so, just the coolest place um, for 
Uh, we got some of the was, off uh, streets, you yeah. know, I, I, for uh, I was a period really movie, quite you would still think you were in the 30s or 40s. So, oh, but yeah. But we so created the, no uh, a traffic hysteria. jam in the town. There were so many people no, driving in from um, everywhere. There was, it, as I said, there if there was, was any hysteria, hard to find a place was among the, uh, uh, anywhere, uh, the media who were there downtown, and the uh, people who came up, I think, for the purpose of really turning it into some sort of I was really sort of amazed at the turnout of this thing. Not so much. You know, number what's of, funny is, of course, it was mostly younger people, people who came but, there. Uh, the yes, interest from around the world so was just, forth, and just added to that. Incredible, that was, amazing. You know, Ken, Ken, you know, Ken I don't know that you said this yet, but, using that, but the I can't original think of anything else. Venue people are dressed up like clowns this, uh, with mm-hmm. things on their head and face. And, this meeting. You know, whatnot. and folks, but, um, I mean, this we're talking the, Texas uh, here. The I'm a Texan. I'm a native Texan. Any of you out there that are native Texans, you know exactly what I'm getting ready to say here. You'll understand. I had, Tell us what uh, the original venue was uh, that one, could hold a uh, large crew number of people. That came from New York. They, they <laughs> well, said that they were in the middle we, uh, of you know, we had filming just a, a few days to try to line up um, uh, uh, a venue. Sure, and so we called what, around uh, network it was and, and they were told and all to get on a plane and get and to really Dublin. And really, there was nothing available the on that day. sort of a I mean, notice. And, and, and frankly, some of the places want to be paid. Uh, you know, this, uh, there was one the correspondent there for and, uh, uh, we Japanese didn't have network. To pay them, so uh, 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 finally, there was uh, uh, a reporter there from a large San Francisco newspaper. I mean, these Offered folks came from all this, over uh, the country. Auction part. And so that AP <laughs> but wire the was, uh, just lit up the newsrooms, uh, you know, apparently it everywhere. It had been full of cows, you know, for an auction and, the night uh, before. We didn't and, uh, publish up, the so. notice. You know, you better uh, wear your, your boots and your high wear to interview witnesses because, one because there were simply too many <laughs> there of them. There was still a lot of uh, cow residue all over the place. One at a time. Anyway. And so uh, that would have been, you know, we had to have really a uh, place. And of course, uh, wow, you know, that was something. Rustic. Sort of like a rustic. Rustic. <laughs> people from all over. Uh, one but, of the Dr. Uh, Pepper I had a call officials from the, uh, the, the plant, plant manager who uh, made the arrangements for us there at the Rotary Club told me that there were 500 and people in that room. Said, uh, Wow. You know, and here you're going to have was, your meeting in, a, so in the uh, cattle barn there. And Steve, we could see people coming to the front door and they would turn away. He said, well, you know, uh, there just the wasn't any of the place for the uh, Rotary stand. Club, and, and, got, we'll and the guy it. just was kind of shaking his head. And, and said, we'll I don't think we've uh, ever had more uh, than two hundred people in this original Dr. Pepper course. As good as Dr. Pepper, Pepper stuff is, stuff is. In exactly. <laughs> market. And, and uh, I, I got to tell you, this uh, little popcorn, he said, we'll, we'll supply the refreshments. Uh, still has some of those. Uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm telling you, uh, many, many gallons built, of Dr. You know, Pepper were in the drink that depression day, but, era. You know, you know that is the, the original energy drink. <laughs> <break. laughs> I mean, just the coolest place for one of the original uh, Dr. Some of the Pepper offers, streets, uh, you know, mm-hmm. for uh, uh, you've got a period of movie, for the rest which still think you were in the 30s. It's made with real sugar. We created a traffic jam in the town. There were so many people driving down everywhere. There was cane sugar. It was hard to find a place to park. And the anywhere. The and syrup is thicker downtown, quote than, unquote, uh, area. The regular Dr. Pepper, and so um, <laughs> you know, that I, are made. I, at I the was p- really sort Pepsi of amazed at the turnout of this thing. thing. Not so much anyway, the number of. Uh, the witnesses, he had no we idea what he was few, getting but, into when he offered uh, the, the interest from around the world. Oh, it was just this thing, but just, uh, incredible. It, it all went pretty well. Ken, Ken, and one Ken, of the pictures you showed earlier had not only my team. Yeah, for this, me uh, out front there with <laughs> this interview up. and this meeting, and, uh, and folks, but I mean, this, we're uh, talking Dr. Texas Pepper here. Folks yeah. in, in Texan, the background, I'm a native Texan. We're hosting us, Any of you so. out there that are native um, Texans, you know exactly you like what a I'm bunch getting of ready to say here. You're you're some sort of uh, elementary Tell us school, what the original venue was that could hold a large number of people. Well, let me give out our number again in case somebody wants to call in and talk to you personally. 888 Call in and talk to Ken and Cherry really about his new book. Mark Slade investigates the Stephen Bill's UFOs. And frankly, some of the places want to be paid. And you know, this just in, in the next 10, 15 minutes, and, Ken, uh, I want, and then I, I want you to them, give us so, a little bit of teaser uh, finally, about the book. Um, somebody but ran first a, of all, a catalog auction board. How long did the actual investigation <laughs> last? And how many actual 
people, <laughs> but the uh, investigators was, from MUFON, did you uh, assign you know, to this? It had been full of cows, you know, for an auction the well, night before. Well, the official and clean uh, up, so, investigation you know, lasted you better wear for your, your boots and your white right right ears if you were going to attend um, that one because <laughs> we have really <laughs> started looking a lot into cow these, residue uh, all over the place. And a anyway, huge increase in the number of sightings uh, that in would December have been early uh, 2007. <laughs> uh, and you know, the the rest um, day. Let's call yeah, it rest They day. continued <laughs> sporadic <laughs> That's a good way to describe it. But uh, I had a call from the, uh, uh, the plant manager of the Dr. And then we had another plant there in, in Dublin. Um, and yeah, he um, said, the mass uh, siding, not a, you know, not here a you're going to have a meeting in the mass siding. Again, in our October of 2008. Of 2008. And he said, we'll then uh, offer the you details the of that the, investigation uh, Rotary ran, Club, you know, and through we'll the balance host of the year. So the and actual we'll bring, uh, investigation uh, Dr. Last Pepper, the right at a full Dr. year, Pepper, of course, not the stuff uh, with you get MUFON, the but my own and, uh, investigation continued. And, uh, popcorn. For, he said, we'll, we'll supply the oh, refreshments. Uh, <laughs> two and a half, three years <laughs> yeah, afterwards. Many, many uh, gallons of Dr. Pepper and, were um, drank that day. But some of you know, the, that is the original energy sources that I had, though. If you drink one of the original Dr. Pepper, a uh, number of years, you know, a couple of those, and you've got an even one from the rest of the day. To my, it's made uh, with uh, real with no sugar. But and it's, initially, we had uh, seven investigators syrup, no, plus my it's chief investigator, sugar, sugar, and it's uh, uh, and myself uh, and the. And the a radar slash than, uh, FOIA, the regular Dr. Pepper, FOIA, meaning <laughs> freedom know, of information that are made in the really Pepsi plants uh, wherever uh, up here in North Texas. It's a specialty of, uh, of its own. Uh, he, he had no idea how to what go he was about getting into requesting when he offered the type of uh, technical data that we but, uh, needed. And so, it, it all went pretty uh, well. And one of the pictures you showed uh, earlier. Had so, not only my uh, team in the beginning uh, there were uh, ten with of me up front there with a the um, blazer on. And, bear in uh, mind though that about uh, a few of on, the uh, Dr. Pepper uh, folks in the, in the background, background there volunteers. Were hosting us. So and so um, you look like uh, a bunch of graduates from some, some of those, sort of uh, elementary uh, school seventh grade program or something. They, 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 they all the way through. We <laughs> we had others who came well, in at me, later uh, times and then some were again in case somebody wants to call in and talk to you personally. Eight 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 nine one nine two three five five. You know, I would say over the years time there were probably call in and talk to Ken Cherry about his new book. Oh, gee, now I'm thinking about the additional scientific. Support and that just we in, in the next 10, 15 to 20 minutes, people can I want? Wow. All, and then I, I want you to give us a little time, bit of so. teaser about the book. Yeah, but it was, first of all, it, it was quite a lot that went into it. How long the actual investigation and, well, and it wasn't and exactly many what actual you would call a smooth paved uh, road the investigation. Move on. Did you assign to this? <laughs> no, and um, uh, you know we well, ran into the official roadblocks. Constant uh, investigation lasted for one of the right out of year. Well. Um, we uh, have really started in looking into boats, these, uh, and without naming any names, a huge increase in the number of we, sightings in December. We're constantly having problems uh, with the media and, um, who wanted to be involved in they the investigation radically, uh, <coughs> who excuse me. would try to preempt us <laughs> uh, with the witnesses, or, and then we had another... Uh, um, Make themselves uh, intermediaries with witnesses not a, not a mass or number somehow or another mass signing bet again in October in the story. of 2008. And so that, that and complicated matters. Then the details um, of that investigation there were, there were ran other, you know, through the balance uh, of a year. So bigger the actual issues, though, investigation what, lasted uh, at right at a full the year when we had asked uh, for, with MUFON. But you know, my the own investigators who continued for, were able to come and volunteer to oh, travel there uh, um, two and a half, three the, years. Afterwards, uh, I wasn't exactly and, uh, sure who would some uh, of the answer the call. To, and, sources um, that I until, had, though, until the uh, day I had that we actually met there over a uh, number Dublin. of years while yeah, I was at in any rate, on, and even um, one prior to to my. We had one uh, involvement with uh, MUFON, female investigator. Uh, initially, we had, had uh, just seven moved there investigators from plus California, my chief investigator. and she didn't have her credentials with her. Uh, and myself, uh, carry a, an ID and a card radar says, slash you know, what your FOIA expert job FOIA meaning is in Freedom of Information Act. And, and it, she should have really, had one that's a field investigator. It's a specialty all She was the only it, female investigator we had. We had quite a few 
asked the ladies kind of go that about requesting we felt, you know, the type might of feel more uh, technical to talking data to that her we needed. Or whatever. In so, other words, we were desperate uh, anyway. We had some requesting folks for, uh, radar information. We accepted her on the so, basis of her uh, word. In the beginning, you know, there were 10 of us. It turns out um, that she was not. She was, uh, bear in mind, though, that uh, yeah, she was with, on. Um, she had uh, attended operates on the back of volunteers some, uh, class yeah, so, on uh, UFO field investigation. Some of those they claim uh, was equivalent. Investigators uh, didn't move find training the case all oh, the way through. We, we had others and, who came in at later times, uh, and then some were. <laughs> This a couple were fired, started, uh, uh, and new ones joined us. So, putting herself out as an you know, expert I would say over the years, time UFO probably, and offering, you know, to do speaking. Oh, gee, now I've been that, thinking uh, about uh, the conditional scientific uh, support rate, that we, we had. had firing there were probably her for 18 to 20 people. Of she wasn't wow. qualified. All told, oh, over the years' time. The so, that's amazing. And, yeah, of course, they yeah, said, was, look, we never told her. quite a lot that went into it. Anyway, well, and it wasn't exactly what you would call a smooth. The, the biggest problem, the however, was with our radar <laughs> no, uh, and uh, FOIA you expert. Know, we ran into roadblocks uh, He had sent me his credentials one by the, email uh, uh, the night before well, the meeting. And uh, we had, a, I suppose, uh, a number and of without naming folks any who were names or uh, any specific vetted, person. We consultants were from constantly having problems in, in various with the media, you know, scientific uh, fields who wanted to be involved in the investigation. Had uh, outstanding credentials uh, who and would try to preempt uh, he us asked if he could be witnesses um, or uh, my uh, radar uh, make expert. themselves intermediaries and so, with witnesses uh, or he was somehow or another from um, bed them. Right in the story, and, and so I that said, that complicated matters. Yeah. I mean, you know, he, um, he was well qualified. There were, quite there were a couple so of other. We met uh, at uh, the meeting there in Dublin, issues, and uh, uh, I welcomed the board, uh, shook hands with him. The and meeting he, when we had asked uh, for very enthusiastically you know, the, said, "I appreciate the investigators the to work with you. You were able to come come back volunteer to, to travel there. We only have a few days um, to file for the uh, FOIA at request for the radar. I wasn't exactly sure who and would I'll be back uh, with yeah. answer the call. To, well, and, that was uh, the last time until, I ever heard from him until the oh, day that we actually met there in Dublin. That was any just rate, one of the um, many obstacles and roadblocks that we I had kept running one, into a uh, female with my own organization uh, who said that she had just moved there the from national director California. Of, you know, we didn't into, have her credentials with her. Uh, uh, you carry a, matches an ID and card that really screaming says, matches, but know, I was upset. Your, let's put it that way. Job and he would assure me, you know, you're in charge. I'll talk to her. I don't get a investigator, but nothing happened. She was the only female investigator we had, and we had And then we would talk to lady witnesses. And they would say, we Look, felt, somebody's already you know, been here, and they told feel us not more to cooperate to talk with you, to her, or whatever. They, in other words, we were desperate they said anyway, we were at headquarters. So we accepted her on the basis of her word that, you know, she was a film It turns out that she was not. And so, because we were shut off from some witnesses and... Uh, some cut off from uh, critical class data on that we needed. The UFO field we were constantly being they hammered was in the equivalent the, in uh, the MUFON newspaper training. by oh, for goodness one sakes. particular reporter. And, uh, you know, what's going on? Why is it taking <laughs> so long? Blah, blah, blah. Uh, and um, putting herself uh, out as an expert she on was constantly Steve printing UFO stories and offering, <clears throat> you know, to do speaking were, really, things. That, uh, there is no that substantiation whatsoever. At any rate, we ended up firing uh, anybody her for misrepresentation. Of course, she wasn't uh, qualified. Give her, mm-hmm. and you know, some in interesting UFO school. And the course, they said, that, "Look, we never you know, told they her say that they had whipped you know, us. This is going to make her." And and anyway, uh, that's just way to too much kind of quell some of the criticism. The biggest uh, problem, a couple of however, was with the radar. Several uh, of the FOIA X stories that she had printed. Uh, he had sent and me his credentials generated by email. From uh, the night before the meeting, and the problem was, and the uh, we had a, four uh, a number of folks would go on the radio on interviews uh, with this person, consultants, mm-hmm. from and MUFON it seemed to lend credibility to her and you know, scientific you know, fields that we were and this gentleman you know, incompetent, had, uh, outstanding so credentials. So and just uh, he asked if he uh, could be uh, building uh, my uh, <laughs> radar uh, for you, you know, and so. I, um, 
I'm he was traveling patient from, to um, a point, but then Colorado. after that, I was, just, I was ready to blow. And I, so I confronted the yeah, I mean, board you know, of directors he, he and so well forth. qualified, why not? So but it was at that point, we met at, trying to understand uh, what was there going there on. I and, started investigating uh, I my own the board organization with him, and he and, uh, very enthusiastically came to some said, shocking I appreciate conclusions. the opportunity to work with you, yada, yada. I'll be that, back in touch soon. Excuse me, just We only have a few days to file for the FOIA request for the radar. Uh, and I'll be back with you. Uh, after well, I left Mufon, that was the last I time I ever heard from him. Uh, well, the public sense. needed to know about and, and so this was so the basis for the tell -all. That was just and, one of uh, the many obstacles and roadblocks uh, that I kept running uh, into. I dug uh, with my own deeper. organization, and I, I would found call that this was just the, the international director. Has, you know, we got into again the term "tip of the <laughs> ice for screaming me. matches." Um, um, not really, screaming match, but I was upset. Let's put it that way. It became pretty clear. And he would assure me, at a, you know, a, you're at in a charge. Point, I'll talk to due everybody. To the nature, I don't get my nothing happens. Informant, um, whatever. And then we would talk to key witnesses, and really say, "Look, somebody's already been here. They told us not to cooperate with you." At that there, point, there so it had they to said they're from your headquarters. But at any rate, get your uh, act together was um, the term. Uh, 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 a couple of said. said. Mm. And That's so, uh, pretty much because we were shut off from overall, some witnesses and move on investigation, uh, cut off from uh, as I mentioned earlier, data I personally that we took needed. We were a couple of hundred being calls hammered from people in the, in the I know, I stopped newspaper at 150 you by know, one particular reporter. And every time a story you know, would appear, what's going on? Why is it taking so long? Newspaper blah, blah, blah. or uh, and, TV um, news uh, uh, program or radio well, she talk was show. constantly printing stories. Uh, <clears throat> I get that were a number really, of there was no substantiation whatsoever. But once in a while, uh, I get that real at that nugget point, uh, that, who uh, would uh, information get for somebody I know, you know some interesting I UFO caller ID sighting uh, <laughs> earlier. You know, they and, say they had uh, witnessed. Yeah, one was from and, uh, um, DOD. Just to kind of quell I, some I of the really criticism, didn't know what DOD meant. Uh, a couple of my at investigators that point, at that solved point, but several uh, of the uh, stories Mr. that Cherry printed. Yes. Just a moment. And let me close my door. Just generated more heat from her. And the problem you know, was this gentleman the spoke tell me something that you know, this made my jaw drop. Would go on the radio and, and interviews uh, with this person. Uh, obviously, and it I seemed to lose credibility to her. He was an active and, member, and then I, you know, that I, uh, we were, I got some information you know, from a retired so CIA agent. So there's this it just, actually is one of the characters uh, in my book, building um, <laughs> and uh, something uh, from I'm not, uh, uh, you know an NSA I, contractor. I'm, uh, who's patient to a point, but then active. after that, I was, just, I was uh, ready to blow. So I confronted the board of directors uh, and so another forth. Another person, I honestly but it was don't at that know point, what his trying position to is, but I know it's very high up. I started and, investigating and, uh, my own uh, organization, the Power Circles, and in, in DC, came to some shocking uh, conclusions. So, I mean, uh, <clears throat> just if that anybody reads the me book just a moment. and thinks that. Uh, you know, any of these scenarios are too far fetched. Uh, that uh, I would just tell you that after I left, for the most part, on, they're, they're based on that, uh, the public uh, needed to know about. Uh, and so this very was the basis for the people's tell claims. And, and uh, um, I just, uh, uh, I'm, as you, you stop I anytime you want, deeper and deeper, point, but I'll just keep talking. Well, I found that this was just the, Well, uh, I was going to ask you, um, the, the, I'm I getting a little concerned again, about your voice, and I know iceberg. that I mean, in an interview, I want, um, the, I want you to talk, but I also, I also don't clear want you to go at into a, laryngitis at a given here. Point, so, due to the nature um, of some of my where, where I would like whistleblowers, to go next, so Ken, is, whatever. Um, if you could pretend uh, I, I really that couldn't, you've just bought this uh, book and you've read it and, and you've run into somebody who's a good so friend of yours and you're novel. trying to tell them but the, a rate, brief uh, overview about um, the book that uh, would make the, them want to go buy it. Can you give us it, just a real that's uh, a high level overview of what is going on in this book on investigation. because it is so uh, much as I more than earlier, I UFOs or ETs or I mean it's it's I think I said earlier I know I stopped it's like an X Files episode you know they're just oh, it's more than that. every time so a story you, would appear in you have enough magazine, in your left right now to give us a real brief overview TV right, news right. and uh, a program or a radio um, talk show. Uh, I Let me think about this for a moment. But a number of uh, um, calls from people who were I witnesses, 
the but name once in a while of an I get that real nugget that, uh, uh, with information form, from somebody uh, I know. Shortly after I mentioned my book, caller ID, I closed down, and I'm, uh, I'm assuming that most of our audience is yeah, one with was book, from but it was uh, the Air Force DOD investigation I, of UFOs I really didn't that know what they DOD meant. in the end concluded at that uh, point. At that point, you know, there's but, nothing uh, to see here go away, and they closed uh, it down. Is this Mr. Cherry? But, uh, yes. Just a moment. Let me close my door. The official. And, you know, uh, uh, and this gentleman would tell thing. me something that, you know, just made my uh, jaw drop, you know, was formed, and, uh, uh, and uh, that was completely uh, infiltrated by this man's uh, name. He was an active uh, member. And then I, Alphabet uh, uh, Agency, I, I got some information folks. from a retired and, um, CIA agent. I, uh, yeah, I give the name of the, some of the people in involved book. in it in the book. Um, <clears> and uh, I guess something really what from, I want people to uh, know uh, is that an NSA contractor um, uh, who's <laughs> still there, quite active. Uh, uh, there are UFOs. Uh, obviously, uh, another and, person. Uh, I honestly don't you know, know some of some are not ours, but I know it's very um, high up, and, and, and some uh, are, uh, are, are operated uh, jointly in, in DC. And we've had a program for, uh, for a so, very long I mean, time. But there are very just powerful if anybody people reads the book uh, who are think trying that, to keep that uh, information from you know, the any of these scenarios are and, too far uh, fetched to the extent that they uh, can't I would just tell keep you that. It, out for the most the part of the media, they're, they're, based they're trying on, to control it um, using you know, disinformation very criminal or people's claims, intimidation, and, or whatever they can. Um, I just, um, uh, I'm, and you, you stop me anytime uh, you want here at some point. You know, I'll I just guess keep talking uh, if you like. That's but the central well, point I was going to ask you uh, of the um, book. I'm getting a little concerned just, about uh, your voice, um, and I know the that, fact that in an interview, you know, I, want the the, I want you to talk, but. History, I, also, probably, I also don't want you to being go into laryngitis here. So, um, um, where, where and I there would are like people who next, believe though, Ken, is, uh, that it should um, be disclosed. If you could and pretend there are people who are that you just, just bought this book it. and you've and, read it, and you know, you've run into somebody who's a good friend of yours, and you're trying to argument, tell them sometimes the, it's very a brief difficult overview to about the book that would make them want to go buy it. Can you give us just a real with disclosure? That would make them want to go buy it. Can you give us just a real disclosure? Can you give us just a real disclosure? Brings, a high level overview of um, what is going on in this book possibly some because it is so much more than in UFOs the way the world or operates. ETs or and, I mean it's it's um, I think I said things, earlier and I'll relate it's this like back an X Files episode only it's more than that. One so of the could you that we do, saw, do you have enough of your throat uh, left right now to give us a real brief overview? Right, right. By and, press, uh, by the, um, um, television by this, this Let me think about this for a moment. But, all over the world uh, on this small um, community, is I give that, uh, the uh, name every time of an organization uh, a that, new uh, was formed, uh, citing individuals uh, shortly uh, after a new book story appeared in Steubenville. I'm assuming that most um, our, of our audience our is citing with Blue Book, but it was the Air Force's uh, investigation in, of UFOs that they <laughs> and concluded over uh, time, you know, there's nothing some to of see the or go away, and they close people it who down. start out as being very but, uh, reliable witnesses shortly after that uh, government start official, seeing UFOs everywhere. Uh, I mean, uh, you know, uh, I think uh, uh, what happened was thing. that. Uh, People a UFO became group that was hyper aware. In uh, other words, they were was completely the infiltrated by more intently uh, than probably they ever had. And then suddenly alphabet, there were things that they couldn't see, understand folks. up there. Cause, you know, maybe, and, and a lot um, of them were natural phenomena. I, you know, I give but, the name and some um, of the people involved uh, in the One in the book. Uh, evening, uh, <clears throat> uh, well, I guess Dr. really what I want uh, people to know Bruce is McAfee, that who is our <clears throat> photo um, expert. There, and uh, Bill Burns, who is a PhD, there are UFOs, and myself, uh, Bill Burns, obviously, was the, and uh, I guess you know, some of ours, some are not <laughs> the, ours, the lead, um, uh, and the uh, our, series our, UFO our operated uh, jointly. Um, and we've and had a program for experience for a very long time, time, but there are I mean, very powerful UFO people magazine, everything, so uh, who are yeah, just like trying to keep that information of from the public. And, and we were sitting uh, around to the extent uh, that they just can't keep discussing it what was going on the media the that they're trying to and control. And Dr. It. McAfee was the first Using one to mention it. disinformation. That there was a type of hysteria that had taken whatever over. they can there, um, and he had seen it before. And Burns and I uh, both agreed. Uh, yeah, you know. So I the mood changed. That's the central with point the intensity of the, of the coverage. Uh, of the book. 
and it's people's just a, perception uh, change. The fact that from you know, what has been the early on, and, and I'm not saying history probably, everybody, but just being in general what we us. experience. Um, so there's a case, like a and there are people who right? believe sure uh, and, that it should be disclosed. So there's a case and that there can are people be made who are just dead set against it and uh, feel that you know, we should uh, when you hear disclose. There's people who feel that we shouldn't disclose. Sometimes it's very difficult to decide the reaction. Who's right, right good. who's wrong? I mean, the because people just were th- with disclosure. You know, they were just curious. They want to know, hey, um, are they aliens? What are they? I mean, we could accept very that. They were all changes. changes. But as and time went the way on, the world you see that and <coughs> the reality. Um, one of the of things, it, and I'll relate the possibility back to of the reality the of investigation, will one of the things that we saw lives. Uh, and so with this you know, it's, constant it's kind of hard to know the, which side to come down on once you've really investigated uh, all by the, the aspects of it this, but uh, this, you know focus uh, from all I over guess the world on this people would be for disclosure is that uh, I, uh, I just every time, I just think it's something that everybody uh, should know. A new, so anyway um, I've added exciting individual uh, writing uh, uh, a new to story appeared in Steamville or uh, uh, clamoring for disclosure and I, reports. Uh, I try to give uh, in, in, volume some, increased um, examples of things and that have over to time people in, pa- in the past. Some of the people who uh, start out as well known, reliant your witnesses, some of the things that have happened to them, some of the serious deaths everywhere. I mean, you know, accidents, quote unquote, and so forth. What happened was and, that uh, I mean. Uh, even people became uh, hyper aware. In other words, I they were looking up at the sky had, for the, uh, more intently than probably of, they ever uh, had, and then suddenly there were things. I mean, that what they his family felt were, up there, uh, you know, uh, and a lot of them were natural, natural phenomena. Mm-hmm. And he had actually but, been approached by um, men in black. So, so one uh, wow. evening, uh, yeah. Uh, well, um, Dr. Uh, I, I, Bruce McAbee, who is our still want to get back to this overview, but <coughs> photo we've got a question from Rachel and, in the chat uh, room. This Bill is, Burns, who I is think a this PhD, is going to tickle you, and uh, myself. I th- Bill Burns was <laughs> I'm the. Gonna, I'm very interested to hear how you're going to answer brains, this question. The, Ken, where the lead, did you write your book? Uh, at the, home uh, or somewhere UFO else? Hunters. And I have a picture in my mind um, right now of Stephen King locking himself up in a hotel in Maine. UFO, and if you I mean, did write it at UFO home, magazine, how did so you keep? I love this like part. How did you keep from getting uh, distracted? <laughs> and uh, we were sitting around. Just, I did, uh, and I did just <laughs> discussing <laughs> what was going on there in Stephenville. And Dr. McAfee no, was the first um, one to mention it's it. It's not an easy thing to do, is it? There was a type of hysteria and, that had taken um, over. Actually, and the book is it about the Burns and I both agreed. Fourth, yeah. So the mood <laughs> changed generation uh, with the intensity of the coverage as in. As and I gained people's new perception insight, new information and, from uh, what had it been changed early completely. On. I mean, and I'm not saying for everybody, uh, but just in five general, years, what we I wrote a uh, private so wealth there's newsletter. There's like a heightened sensitivity, and right? And so um, sure. my background and is in finance and so economics. So there's a case that could be made much by more used to both uh, the using who, charts and graphs. I uh, <laughs> feel that we should you know, um, disclose and people who feel that we shouldn't disclose. Because initially... So it, the, the reaction like to, was quite good. It, I mean, my, the people uh, just were writing. Was, you know, they were just curious. Pretty, uh, I want to know. Hey, uh, are they well, aliens? What are they? I mean, we can accept that. And they were all cool with it. <clears throat> you know, but as my time went on, as an you analyst, see that, but uh, <clears throat> the reality uh, of it, it, it became the pretty clear at some the point that it wasn't going to fly like that. Will <laughs> affect so, people you know, in their daily lives. All and those facts and things together is an interesting story. which side come down on when you really you know, I found that. It really it fell together, it. but uh, uh, you know, uh, it was I guess odd one of those times people would vote for disclosure. At two or three o'clock uh, in the morning. I, I just, I just I would think it's something that everybody should know. Just write so anyway, I'm, I'm I've added my page. It just, uh, the words just flowed uh, so, to those um, folks who are, creative are uh, clamoring well, for disclosure. Yeah, and it's I, like I never I try really stopped working on it, but I did have a home base of examples of things that have and so the people in in the past. You know, I had to kind of. Uh, we're well known, the two, but in the ufology, end, some of the things that um, happened to them, some of the, <laughs> the mysterious loss, I was ready to retire in anyway, so, quote unquote, um, and so forth. And, but uh, uh, I mean, the, the year that even uh, I investigated, uh, uh, one of the sources this, that I uh, that had worked in this investigation uh, intensely died of, uh, uh, I mean, 
Ooh, they what his family like felt were more uh, than in half uh, and so, suspicious uh, circumstances. There were some other, and he had actually been approached by men uh, in black, uh, contributing so, factors wow. from my wife. Yeah. But uh, well, we, um, we felt it was time I, to I, I, give I up. Still want to get back the, to this overview, the work but and we've got a question this. from Rachel yeah. in the chat room. We've got to make a decision. You can't be split between two big projects like that. No, and you know what I had done for almost forty years, frankly. Where did you write your book at home? You know, I was tired. Or I was ready to move on. And I have a picture and, uh, in my mind right now of on. Stephen King locking hobby. himself up in a hotel and in Maine. I, I, and if you did I write it at home, because of some how of the experiences did you keep, I love this had, part. But how did you keep from getting distracted? Here I was money, and <laughs> I, I never I did, really I made didn't. it uh, public. <laughs> <laughs> there I was this UFO investigator, <laughs> no, which is um, kind of funny. It's because, not an easy thing to do, um, is it? It is not. And I was winding um, down my business. Actually, uh, the book uh, is about uh, the uh, late 2008. <laughs> and fifth generation. All of these stories have been appearing. Uh, because, and some of my biggest said, clients as, as called me just as I laughing, gained you know? new insight, new <laughs> yeah, information. Never, you know, they, uh, they it changed they never, completely. I mean, they had never for, envisioned me as just uh, twenty you know, UFO five years investigator. I wrote they thought a, I was the least likely person I had ever met. You know, and so <laughs> my so background is in finance no, and economics. No, I didn't fit the profile. I was much more and, used to uh, or, using you know, charts and graphs and geek in a basement or you know whatever. Uh, economic history. Like the, now and I'm thinking of the, uh, so the, the lone gunman in the X Files. So, there you go. <laughs> like to, yeah. It, well, my, uh, before I want to ask you some specifics about the book, pretty, but first of all, I'm going to uh, tell me, correct well, me if, if I'm wrong on any of this, but a real brief dry, overview <clears> and you know, from my, my point of view of the book an analyst, is but, we've got uh, Mark Slade. First of all, the events uh, happened, it, it and Mark Slade is in charge of investigating them. Wasn't gonna fly he goes like to Stephenville, and then all of this strangeness starts with the organization. As a, and as he an interesting winds up story. Um, meeting but I, an elderly you know, I found man that it really, it had, fell who together. Uh, says, you know, there's uh, there's more to this than, it was than, odd at times. than you think there is. And then he meets an elderly woman. Morning, he winds up going to D.C. And, my desk uh, and, just and he comes page back page and all of a sudden he finds the words himself explode, so. right in the um, middle um, of creative spurts. Groups who want well, very much to yeah, disclose like I never really what's been happening. And groups who would do anything at all, including murder. Um, to you keep know, that from happening, kind of and the rest of the book the two, but in the is end, him sort of um, writing this this way. The business lost. I was ready to between retire. Between the two anyway, groups, so. is he going to get? Um, is he going to fall prey but, uh, to the ones the, who the year that, who uh, want to do the disclosure uh, side this, in, or this, is the disclosure uh, the, the side going to win? Uh, he does have his own interaction uh, with mean, the men in black. The he has his interaction with. More, more than, than a couple of assassins, and, so, uh, and one of the coolest parts of the plot, can, uh, he winds up going down wife, into but, uh, the uh, super we, collider we complex and walks a hatchy, which is just, uh, uh, just a stone's throw this. from Stephen yeah. Bell. I gotta and, make a decision. Uh, you can't find all split kinds between of things two bit of like there that. for a long time. No, and, mm. and then you know, they try to kill him again. For almost 40 so years, frankly. It's just one thing uh, after the other. And you know, it's I was just, tired of it. I was ready really, to move on. Really, it's a page turner. Uh, well, move it, you on. Know, every hero on has to get beaten up and shot and at. I, it, I, because <laughs> I found it fascinating because of some of the experiences that I had. But here I was handling wealthy people's money. He's a former Marine. He could take it. So I never really made it public. <laughs> I'd say you gave was pretty good information. You almost gave the whole book which is away. Kind of funny but because, no, no, the book is the details. Now, tell me, <laughs> who really is Mark Slade? Is this supposed uh, to be you? In, uh, uh, well, <laughs> late 2008. He's probably 30 and years ago. All of these stories the bill, appearing. Suppose, and some of my biggest uh, clients called me yeah, just I laughing. Guess, you know, know. Everybody writes yeah, they from never, their own you know, perspective. They, they, and, they, never, uh, they had never envisioned me as this UFO investigator. I guess. I thought I was the least you likely know, person be, I'd ever yeah, met, you know. A former, <laughs> just so, a former bill. self. No, uh, no I didn't I fit am the a profile. Former, a former yeah, Marine, or, you know, know this, uh, some of the geek in the basement, he had, or, you yeah. know, whatever. <laughs> you know, he, he was the, uh, like the now head I'm of, of the, um, the, the lone an organization the that, uh, there was, yeah. for the well, scientific study of UFOs. Before, I want to ask you some specifics about the book, but first of all, I'm going to, tell me, correct me if I'm wrong on any of this, but a real brief overview. You and he does from my point into, of view of the book uh, is we've got you know, Mark Slade. First of all, the events happen. And Mark Slade is in charge of investigating and him. So, he goes you know, to Stephenville and then all 
there. All of this um, strangeness starts with the organization. I'd and have he to say winds that, up um, you know, meeting an elderly man of the folks who, uh, involved with says, the Stephen you know, Doe case, there's more to this than, than reporters, than you think there is. And then he meets an elderly woman. Um, he winds up going to D.C. You know, whomever. Uh, and he comes back, and uh, all we of a had sudden a he them, finds himself uh, right in the middle of the story because groups who want very much to the disclose blind man, you what's know, been trying happening, to an elephant. and groups um, who would do anything I was just at all, including murder. To be in this unique position um, to keep that from happening, uh, to and the rest of the book see is the entirety him sort of, of the writing story. this, this and, way. You know, I'm not even saying of that between the two the groups, is he going to get? 100%. Is he going to fall I mean, prey to the ones I'm sure who, that there who are want to do a, a, other the disclosure in this side thing in, or probably have even disclosure more side clear picture win. than I presented uh, he here. He does but have I his own interaction with I the men in black. The he has his interaction with there. more um, than a couple of assassins. And so, and one and, of the and, coolest and parts quite of quite a lot of fun details as well. He winds so, up yeah, going um, down into the uh, super collider there are, uh, complex uh, and walks in the book that are based on real people. Just a stone uh, throw the elderly from gentleman Stephen Bell. In, in the book. And uh, he uh, finds all kinds uh, of things that have been hidden there for a long time. He's kind of cool. And then they try to kill him again. 70s. Uh, so he wears it's just one thing suits, after the other, and it's just ponytail, really, it's a page turn. You know, well, I, you know, I see every hero has to get beaten up and shot at. Uh, you know, David Carradine. <laughs> and he does type his share of being beaten up and shot at. He has his, he has his uh, share, always, but you know, he's cool, a former Marine. He can take it. But he, so, is, uh, he is based on an individual. Uh, uh, I actually gave that I knew so many, through you almost gave uh, the whole book away, but that's you know. his, his father. Now, the book is the details. Now, and, tell me, uh, who really is Mark uh, my, Slate? Uh, is this supposed uh, to be you? School buddy, uh, uh, well, I uh, was uh, <laughs> he's probably 30 uh, years ago. Oh, I might have fit the bill, I suppose, but uh, he, did, he never really caught yeah, I guess I, up everybody to his father's writes from their own perspective. I think he, you know. I saw himself I as a rebel. Saw and he he's a free Mark's spirit. Eyes, so yeah, I guess, he was a free spirit. You know, you know, he, never, be, he you know, never pulled out of the driveway without <laughs> leaving you know, a former star <laughs> track. Uh, you know, rubber. I am a former uh, and a Marine. Went down, from there. You know, but at any yeah, rate, some um, of the qualities his that dad he had. Kind of, uh, you know, he he you was know, the, like uh, me, the head academic, of, you know, an organization that was tried to be for the scientific study of UFOs for the benefit of mankind. I had... I met him yeah, uh, sort of evening. similar to my experience. And, uh, uh, by the way, this, he does this run gentleman into, uh, was never home you know, loggerheads except with during his superiors major his organization. organization. He, he was uh, and so, at D.C. You know, there's a, a lot of similarity there. Um, had his own apartment there. And he and his wife were very I'd liberated. They both had their, you know, 99% you know, their companion uh, of the folks very, involved you know, with the Stephen uh, Doe case where they, they be you think, reporters, <laughs> investigators. They even had them at the, um, you know, Thanksgiving, you know, whomever, the the scientists, (laughs) very polite, we had a number of them. Uh, Uh, We got one nice story uh, because they're the proverbial blind man, you know, trying to describe uh, an elephant. Um, we, so we just sat and I was just for a bit lucky thing. enough to be in this I really didn't position, know what this gentleman did uh, to and, uh, see no one the entirety it. of the story. And, ask him, um, and, you know, I'm not even saying uh, that, you know, something the in that regard, that but that's 100%. Sat there, I mean, it's like he was looking through I'm the sure wall. that there are, I mean, you know, just staring other participants in this thing. And he told me that he was a member of a three-man presented here, but I think that I think that the broad brush gave the final there, budget um, approvals for and black so and, 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 budget and quite a lot of fun details wow. as well. So yeah, and um, he said um, he definitely that there are they uh, characters in the book that are based on real people. The budget request uh, the was elderly so gentleman in, in the here. book that he uh, and the other two uh, men were just. You know, he's, they, uh, he's they kind just of cool. refused to sign he, it. I guess they had some in his seventies. Uh, four star general wears sitting there in front of suits. And they said, "Look, <laughs> may even have a ponytail pulled back or something." You know, I, I see him sort of as this old, we're not but deadly, uh, you know, David Carradine type until of character. We know, you know, in the book, uh, what it's where it's going. Uh, always calm, cool, collected, and everything. And he said, "But he is he is based on an individual to this hangar." That Actually, that I knew full through of all sizes of flying school, saucers. But buddy, it was his father, and said, and that's uh, where the money's gone. Uh, my uh, uh, school now, he said buddy, that uh, happened uh, in the early uh, 60s. <laughs> uh, 
Oh God, I don't know what how that to put means. It. Is we have had a he, did, he never really uh, caught Matt had a to his father's space expectations in any regard. Since at I think least he, the early '60s, you know, wow. saw himself as a rebel. Somehow that does anyway. say he's a free spirit. On, yeah, he was a free uh, spirit. You know, he never so many he never pulled out of the so driveway without leaving the public. You know, Arena the last you know, say 12, 15 uh, years, and then it went but it's from staggering there. to think anyway, that uh, that's the case, his and dad that kind of, uh, uh, they were able to you know, like dig me, it that the deeply academic, down and hide you know, it that well and for so, so long. Forth and, Tried to be respectful. Well, you know, I mean, kid. you know, they anyway, used a lot of so methods, intimidation, uh, met uh, him, uh, one evening assassination. Uh, um, by the way, this this gentleman but, was never home. Uh, power is one of the more addictive major things holidays. in the world. He, and, he was uh, uh, people uh, DC who have been let in DC on the greatest person. secret of all time. Had his own apartment there. Yeah, he and his wife were very liberated. They both had their. <laughs> You know, I mean, can you imagine the technology very, that's been locked away from uh, above board? Every, uh, I'm reminded thing. of a quote <laughs> by funny. Ben Rich, <laughs> who was even the, had them at known the, as the father of stealth know, Thanksgiving mm-hmm. Christmas He was dinners, also you know, the uh, <laughs> CEO of the anyway, Lockheed Skunk Works, uh, where I, uh, one they night, performed uh, I had most, to by and, if not, my friend you know, was not there, a very large part of all uh, of the governments. So we, so we just sat and for a bit, and I... Anyway, I really didn't know what uh, this gentleman did. Rich is quoted as having said and, uh, before he died. No one talked we about had it. the technology and to I take asked him um, home. Wow. Uh, you wow. know, something in that and regard. And he Einstein was sat there. Wrong. It was like he was looking through the wall. I mean, and he was just staring like straight this. ahead. Wow. So, <laughs> and he told me that he was a I, member of I a mean, three-man committee. When you think about disclosure, mm-hmm. gave the final and budget the enormity for of what that black means – Budget it project. is mind-boggling. Wow. Uh, in other words, a lot and of the just uh, the stories said, um, that you've heard that you dismiss. They came you know, to the, uh, bu- the budget request was so huge uh, one year that he and the other two <laughs> Look, men were just. If we had they, this could, they just refused to sign 60s. it. I guess they had some. You think four-star general sitting just there in front of us and they around out there <laughs> in the atmosphere and these things? Just an mm-hmm. enormous I mean, of money. this is capable of interstellar we're not travel. sign off the right. approval until or we know. Or interdimensional. I mean, forget stellar. What it's, yeah, yeah. Where it's I mean, going, it's what it's for. We don't. And he know said for sure exactly uh, how they it took operates, them but uh, to this hangar uh, that's uh, that was I mean, the, full the, of the all sizes of flying just absolutely saucers. mind-boggling. So yeah. and said, you know, I can understand where the money's going from mm. the uh, folks now, who want to hide that the, happened the truth in the early from '60s. Oh, oh, why they would be concerned? What that means is I mean, we have had you know, a, half the world is starving. Uh, a secret and, space um, program. Yeah, Since the other half the early is 60s. trying to convert wow. the, you know, Somehow that each other doesn't surprise or take me based what the on, other has or uh, all the information that so many people have worked so the, hard to get you know, out the into the public ladder or whatever. arena I mean, the last, say, 12, are so 15 into years. Their own but thing. it's staggering to think uh, that that's the that, case and that you know, uh, they the, were the able idea to that we're dig it that deeply down and hide it that well for so long. And that, frankly... Uh, well, I mean, uh, you know, they've used a lot of why would you want to pay taxes? Intimidation. I mean, uh, you know, it, 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 if your government doesn't even control the um, skies or whatever, has no control over these yeah, beings. Power is one of the more advanced things in the world. You know, here and, routinely, uh, people I mean, it would just change the calculus of almost the greatest secret of all time. religion, economics. You know, right. have an incentive you know, to keep it to themselves. Ken, I don't want to. I, I hate to interrupt <laughs> I mean, can you, but you imagine you the technology that's this, been locked away from. Like less than five minutes. Uh, 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 I'm reminded now. of a quote oh by Ben Rich, yes, really. who was the time flies. Known as the father of so stealth. So before we before we close out the, tonight, uh, I do want to mention the appendices the in the Lockheed book Skunk because Works, I think it's a unique feature that I've not seen in another fictional account that's not, related to technology. You know, a very large Can part of all of the Can you say just a little bit about that secret uh, projects? Well. I wanted the book anyway, to be something that would be uh, Ben Rich um, is quoted as having a resource said before he died uh, for we people who are maybe new to, to ufology, and I think that wow. there are some wow. uh, and facts Einstein and cases and wrong. situations in there that even many that people who have like been involved years. in ufology wow. for so, years <laughs> may or uh, may not be I aware mean, of. Or when you at think least about know, disclosure, if they've heard it, you know, mm-hmm. where to and put the enormity on what it. that means. And so, 
it also, a wine provide, uh, in other words, a lot of the sort of a factual the stories basis that for you've heard, heard that you just many of the scenarios in, you know, uh, in Mark's adventure uh, here, Mark's is, investigation. Uh, and uh, they'll let you know that, hey, if we you know, had this technology, if since this the 60s, uh, situation sounds far you fetched, think that they when you get to the back of the book, they're going to read about some, there uh, and the atmosphere and these things, you know, some mm-hmm. events that actually I mean, took this place is are very similar. Of interstellar so, travel. Uh, it's, right. it's, in a way, or it's sort of a book within I mean, a book. Forget stellar. And, uh, I, uh, I mean, uh, certainly. I, we don't you know, I, know for sure I exactly that, how it um, operates, but even. Uh, uh, that's there are nuggets I mean, along the, the way. The, the implications in the are book just absolutely itself mind the novel. That, so uh, you know, I are, can are, understand. Yeah, I bring out from some fact the based, uh, folks who uh, want to hide the, the truth you know, from a discussion in there. Why and, they would be uh, concerned. I, mean, I hope everybody you know, enjoys half the it. World is I starving. had uh, a fun and uh, uh, writing it, living yeah, the it, other thinking about it for trying for a long time. To, you know, and uh, each other. Hopefully, or people will the other like has it enough that maybe we'll do coin their um, way up the, the you know continue you know, corporate uh, ladder or whatever. I mean, people are so I, into I their that own. It does work thing. out like that, and actually, uh, I think that, there's a good chance that you um, know the, the idea um, that we're not the top of the it food may chain. turn into a movie. Uh, and our that, producer's frankly, saying that we've got a call coming in. Uh, 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 our, uh, why would you want to see. pay taxes, Joe? If you want to, let's I mean, try and take you know, it real quick. If your government, as long as they understand, we don't have more than a minute or so. Or whatever has no control uh, we do over have these a, beings. A question from the chat room they're so real far quick advanced too, than us, and they're, Someone you know, here uh, wants to know I mean, what just your favorite the modern UFO encounter that you can think story of, religion, is. Economics, right? You know, oh. whatever. Ken, I don't want to. I, I uh, hate to interrupt you, but well, you probably aren't going to believe this, but we have like less than five minutes left now. Oh my gosh. We kind of had yes, a connection really. with uh, Betty Time Hill. Flies. Oh, so but, uh, before Betty we Barney before Hill, we course, close uh, out tonight, I do want to mention you know, the appendices in the book because I think it's that, a unique uh, feature a that case, I've not uh, seen that, in another you know, fictional account that's later, related to technology. Uh, the amniotesis that was performed Can you say on just a little bit about that? Really not heard of back then. Well, uh, when I, say I it wanted the book to be something the, that would be aliens, um, that you described. a resource so that was certainly uh, uh, for people who may be new to ufology, I don't and know. I think I've, that there are I've, some uh, uh, seen in facts and been involved in a number of situations that I think are even outstanding many cases people who have been involved one of them in may ufology be the for years. Of the book. I don't want to give may away or, too much, may but not be aware of, or at least know if they've heard it, you know, where to put their fingers on it. The paranormal so, with you uh, also ETs provide um, and sort of uh, a factual uh, basis for portals for and many of the scenarios. Uh, and a number in, of fascinating in things. Mark's and that's part of the here, Mark's investigation. Um, uh, the and, whole uh, reason uh, let you know that hey, you know, the existence of the epic this, is uh, we do feel that there is a, a, um, a unified when you get to the back of the book, all, you're going to uh, read many about of these phenomena. Uh, and so, you know, uh, some events that actually uh, took place that, that are very similar. I can't so, tell you uh, it's, it's, the name of it. Because, in a way, it's sort of a book within a book. And uh, uh, right now, it's still uh, kind of on the drawing uh, board. But uh, well, I, we, we've I got think people that, in the uh, chat room who want even, you to come back and uh, talk with us more. And we've only got about 15 way, seconds left. In the um, book itself, real quick, I want to mention that back that, to back, uh, I'm going to be here next or, week or, talking to Dr. You know, Rita Louise um, uh, about the ET uh, Chronicles. So be sure and know, join uh, us again next week. In and there. Ken, uh, and, your book, uh, they can go to epicvoyagers.com and get an autographed had, copy uh, directly uh, from you. They can get it at Amazon.com and also go to the publisher, GlennonTie.com. And uh, so check on uh, the Epic Voyagers website for the promo. um, Kim, thank you so much for taking the time uh, to talk uh, with us tonight. I enjoyed and I, it. I hope yes. that it does work glad. out like that. And yeah. actually, glad to come back I think there's sometime. a good chance and that definitely, um, uh, don't let your um, ink get dry. We want you to do some more writing. It may turn into a movie. Uh, our producer's saying that we've got a call handle coming that. in. Oh. Uh, uh, <laughs> well, I'm let's already, see. Yeah, I'm Joe, if you want to, let's uh, try and take it real quick. Now for the next one. As that, long as they understand, the we don't have more than a uh, minute or so. I think we'll tie two or three of these uh, We do have together. a uh, great. question from the chat okay, room Okay, will quick. everybody Two, have a Ken. wonderful and a safe Someone, week? Someone uh, wants to know...
what your favorite modern UFO encounter story is. Thank you for being with us tonight. Please join us again next Monday evening for Extraordinary uh, Phenomenal uh, Investigations well, Council hmm. Epic Voyages. Yeah, I'm I, Roger Peacock for Epic. Until next time. We kind of had a connection with uh, Betty Hill, oh, but uh, Betty Barney Hill, of course, uh, that's a classic, but you know, they did uh, discover a number of things in that uh, a case uh, that, you know, turned out later that the amniotesis that was performed on her was really not heard of back then. Uh, when I say it was performed on her by the, by the aliens that she described. So that was certainly uh, a fascinating case. I don't know. I, I've uh, seen